All right, everyone should be able to see my screen. I'm currently logged into our Grants For Me test site. You know that because there's this bright red lettering here at the top of the page. We have a handful of districts we have set up to help us demonstrate how monitoring works in the Grants For Me platform uh, and all the steps you may need to take to do your initial submission and then any sort of resolution of outstanding issues. <laughs> You'll notice a, a trend here. The districts we're using as examples all are at the beginning of the alphabet. So none of this information is their actual monitoring status. They're just sort of set up as our exemplars so we can demonstrate exactly what needs to happen. If you are a veteran in this process, if you had an SAU last year that was in the monitoring instrument in Grants for Me, you will not offend any of us personally if at this time you feel you're comfortable with the platform and you wish to leave the presentation. We know everyone's very busy. But for those who have not previously been through a monitoring cycle in Grants for Me, there are some pretty unique steps that we want to make sure we demonstrate to folks so everyone knows exactly how to get everything submitted on time. So we're going to start, and you'll notice in the left-hand navigation, we have a gray box that says monitoring and monitoring instruments. And you'll notice we have both the fall and the winter here. So not only can you see those items in the presentation we just gave, you can see them on our website. You can also see them directly in Grants for Me. Uh, but we're going to take a look at the fall monitoring instrument for FY25. So if you have submitted an application in Grants for Me before, this first part's pretty uh, familiar to you. You'll need to change the status of the instrument from not started to draft started. Now that I've done that, I am able to go in and submit my monitoring items. You'll notice here on what's commonly called the sections page that we have the history log and create comment feature that also exists in your ESCA application that you can use to communicate with your regional program manager. The first new page you'll notice is we do have an ESCA monitoring status page. If for some reason you're unsure of your monitoring status, and you cannot, for some reason, find it in your GAN, it is also listed right here on this page next to subrecipient monitoring status. As always, I can navigate by going back to the sections page or going directly to any page here by using this drop-down menu. I'll just go back to the sections page so we can kind of get an overview of what the rest of the monitoring instrument looks like. So you'll notice we're in the fall monitoring instrument again, and we have all of our medium items under one heading and all of our high level monitoring items under the other heading. So let's take a look at just a couple items to show you uh, how this process plays out when you do your initial submission. So we'll start with item A8, which is a Title III family engagement item. Every one of these monitoring items starts with uh, a yes or no question. And in a perfect world, the answer to every one of these questions is either yes or not applicable. So in this case, the question is, did the SAU collect evidence of effective activities and strategies that enhance or supplement language instruction programs for multilingual learners that include parents, family, and community engagement? So there's a drop down: yes, no, or NA. If the answer is yes, we then need to see some sort of evidence that this did occur. And if you need to provide a narrative, there's a box here for that, but there's also a link to upload a document. It lets you know it is going to save all the data when you do so, you click confirm, and then it's just like uh, any sort of document upload you would do. You go in, select your file. You can even give it a unique name. I might call it uh, ML item and click create. So not uploaded evidence. If uh, your answer was no, first and foremost, you can likely expect there to be some sort of corrective action as a result. But I would encourage you to use this box here to provide some context for why the SU may not have been able to complete that monitoring item, because that will help us at Maine TOE with providing you the best support in rectifying that issue. So as always in Grants for Me, when you're done with something, you click Save and Go To. And I'd like to show you item C1 now. So if you had watched or been a part of our training on every one of these items, you heard me talk about class size reduction, and that's what item C1 is about. 
it's something that doesn't happen uh, in a lot of districts. So let's say for this example, the item was not applicable. District would select NA, and then it's helpful in the narrative to say something like, we do not use Title IIa for CSR. Just a short narrative, so when I see that, I know, all right, that's why they marked it as NA. And again, save and go to. And in this case, I'll go back to the sections page. You'll notice we do have validations, just like in the ESE application. And in this case, since I have not answered many of these items, B1, B4, B5, there's a validation. It will not let me submit the monitoring item until I at least answer that yes, no question. But for the time being, I'd like to show you what the high level items now also look like. So if you remember back when we looked at the monitoring status page, uh, this district was not identified for high level monitoring. So if I go to item A2, even though it appears in the instrument, because the instrument looks the same for every SAU, there's nothing on this page because this SAU does not have to complete high level monitoring. If hypothetically they did, the page would look a little different. It would look like this. That little checkbox that was there previously is now checked and you can see the information for the high level item is there. So if you're an SAU that's identified as a medium level of support, you'll know that all of these checkboxes will not be checked. You will not be completing the high level items. Those validations will not be something that you need to uh, worry about. But if you are receiving a high level of support, then you're doing all of the medium and all of the high items. All right. So in our little hypothetical example, we're just gonna pretend that this district has completed every one of the items, just like with your ESC application. Once that time comes, you click draft completed. And that is what sends this monitoring instrument to us at main DOE to begin our review. So for a moment, what I'm gonna do is pause the recording because I'd like to show you what it looks like now after a district uh, goes ahead and submits their monitoring. Actually, I'm just pausing my screen, so I'm not pausing the recording. All right. You should now be able to see that I am under a different SAU, and their monitoring instrument has a different status. Its status is MDOE ESEA Consolidated Regional Program Manager Reviewed. So this tells you, well, it's pretty self-explanatory that main DOE has reviewed your monitoring uh, submissions. So your first step here is, again, a status change. You're going to want to change it to LEA results review started. Once you've done that, this is where you're going to pay close attention. All of your work is going to now happen at the bottom of this sections page under, under what's called monitoring results. And you'll notice we have monitoring results, LEA response. You are the LEA. That is where you're going to do any sort of response that is necessary. All of your initial submissions uh, stay as is, so they serve as a historical record of what you've submitted for monitoring and any corrective actions happen on this page. So the first thing you might notice uh, is that we have a three dot color coded system. You can likely figure out what the dots mean. It's pretty self-explanatory, but three green dots means everything met expectations. Two yellow dots means that something met with recommendations. And one red dot means something did not meet and there is a corrective action required. So if you scroll down, you'll get a bit more details. You'll notice some of these items are sort of three white dots. That means the item was not applicable to this SAU. So an item meets requirements, that is just the feedback you receive if the item has met requirements. There's nothing more we need to say, bravo, nice job. We're glad the item met requirements. However, if the item does not meet requirements, what you see here 
uh, is a couple pieces of information. You have the short sort of alphanumeric code and name of the item. You have the person who may be a point of contact here at Main DOE who reviewed that item. You have that same yes, no question. Again, help jog your memory for what the item was about. And then you have some action required. So this is the additional thing that the SAU needs to do in order to rectify this issue. So in this case, the SAU needs to submit a detailed expenditure re report for this time period for all of their titles. Here is another sort of common sticking point for folks. Now, uh, to upload a file, you're going to use this pencil icon. If I click on that pencil, I can now use that same document upload process to choose my expenditure reports that I need to upload. I'm just going to call them test for today. So now you'll notice they have been uploaded. You'll also notice there was a deadline here. And there's an on time message. So since I've submitted this before November 15th of 2024, the system automatically marks it as having been done on time. We'll come back to what documentation approved means here in a minute. That last option for an item I mentioned is meets requirements with recommendations. And again, you have the point of contact and the summary, but then you have a narrative recommendation from Maine UB that we're asking the SAU to put in place just as part of best practices. In this case, there's nothing to upload. You're just going to acknowledge that you've received and agree to implement this recommendation. And to do that, you simply click the box that says confirms and you'll notice it was done on time. I just want to point out that once all of that work is done, there is no status change here. So whereas before there's a submission, there's draft started, draft completed, the LEA at this point in time does not make a status change. This back and forth can potentially happen without any further uh, status changes and approvals in grants for me. Again, a common sticking point for folks because we know in the application, there's almost always status change to get things to us here at the department. Once again, I am going to uh, pause the screen share for a moment as I pull up another district to again show what happens next in the process. All right, so you'll now notice that this SAU, our new one that we're using as a demonstration here, is back to the status of MDOE ESEA Consolidated Regional Program Manager reviewed. And what that means is that there may still have been some issues with uh, the evidence they uploaded. There might have been an error or there might be more corrective actions needed. So we've had to reopen it. So there's a status change on our end. And then once again, in order for the LEA to make a response, you have to change it to LEA results review started. So again, all of our work is done on that LEA response page down at the very bottom of the sections page. And for this SAU, there are a few things that have happened. So for item B1, they did not meet requirements. They have submitted some documentation. And you'll now notice we at Main DOE have marked this documentation as approved. That's that drop down that I mentioned earlier. However, we've also added a recommendation. So just like before, the next step is to read that recommendation and then confirm that you acknowledge it. For item E1, in this example, unfortunately, what was submitted still did not meet requirements. So we provided a new step two. So again, what was entered here for the first action required stays as historical record, even though you can edit it. We want you working down here now on this new step two. Again, we've given some specific things. You use the pencil to upload, and we'll review it once it's uploaded. And then sort of as the last possible option, uh, when 
documentation is submitted and it's approved and there's nothing more to do, you'll simply see documentation approved and yes next to every one of those. I want to call attention to the fact that uh, the color and the initial score of does not meet here did not change. Right, This is still red. It still says does not meet. That is the historical record of that status. However, the documentation has been approved. So for all intents and purposes, this district is done with item E8. They have some work to do to submit documentation for item E1. And now that they click the confirmation item, they are also done with item B1. So once that uh, documentation is submitted, we check these periodically, or you're welcome to reach out to your regional program manager, send them a quick message saying, hey, I submitted what was needed. Can you take a look? And we'll go from there. And there is just one more thing to demonstrate in the system before we all uh, can go about our afternoon. All right, so you may be asking yourself, how do I know when everything's all set? Well, in this case, this SAU has been given a status of monitoring closed. This should also have triggered an email in the system to you saying that monitoring has been closed. But if for some reason you missed that or it didn't get sent out, you can always check that status. And if the status is monitoring closed, there is nothing more to do. This district is all set. They are done until the winter instrument opens. All right, and that is what I have for all of you in terms of how the monitoring instrument works. I think I'll probably turn things back over to Shelly at this point. I don't know if we have any questions in the chat or anything that needs to be answered.